Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Charmaine Chittister with the EAC Small Business Development Center here in Thatcher, Arizona. I am going to be your host for this webinar, Small Business Loans, and we're excited to have you today. We're expecting some more people to log on, so hopefully they'll be able to get on here without any problems and catch up with us. So I just want to welcome you to our webinar. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about our Small Business Development Center. Let me just take care of some technical issues here. There we go. All right, so small business development centers are throughout the state of Arizona. We actually have 10 centers with satellite centers, a total of 26 locations. As you can see, we're pretty much everywhere in the state. So no matter where you're logging in from, there's a good chance that you're going to be able to use our resources um, somewhere in your, in your area. So we recently moved into a new office here at Eastern Arizona College. So if you ever come see us, just look for the small tan house with the big willow tree out front off College Avenue. I've been with our center for about nine and a half years and we have so many amazing resources for small businesses and it's all no cost, it's all confidential. There's no reason for you not to come to your local center and get help with whatever small business need you have. We also have an organization called PTACT. It's a Procurement Technical Assistance Center. So if you or somebody you know that owns a business wants to do work with the federal government, PTACT also offers free and confidential services to get you all of the certifications that you need to help you look through the bidding process and help you figure out how to maximize um, those federal contracts for your small business. We also recently started a new partnership with the Arizona Commerce Authority. So I wanted to take a minute to make sure you know about their resources. If you haven't gone to their website before, take a moment after our webinar to go to azcommerce.com. They have a lot of great um, drop down menus that take you to places no matter what stage of business you're in. If you're looking at starting a business, one of their best resources is called the Business Checklist. And you just go under startup and then go down towards the bottom right corner and you'll find a link that takes you into a series of questions and you can actually go through those questions and um, state you know maybe you're going to do food food service you think you're going to have employees this is the town that you're going to be working from and it'll give you a whole list of things that you need to do to get your business started so if you haven't used that resource yet make sure you utilize that when the time comes so I want to let you know what our agenda is today. Though it's slated for an hour, we might get out of here a little early, depending on what kind of questions you guys have. So first, we're going to talk about the current lending environment and why it should matter to you. We're going to address grants for small businesses. That's always a popular question. We're going to talk about what do you need funded, how much do you need funded, and how to start that process of figuring it out. We're also going to address the types of loans that are out there for small businesses. There are some different types of loans and it, it can be confusing of which loan is right for you. We're also going to talk about all of the different lenders. There's different segments of lenders. Um, some of them you might not even be aware of that the small business development centers work with. We typically just think of commercial banks when we think of business lending, but there's actually quite a few other alternatives out there. We're also going to talk about how to qualify for a loan, and maybe more importantly, what you can do now to prepare if it's something that you think you might need in the near future. We're going to have a section at the end for questions and answers, but if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to pull up your chat box. Your chat box might not be shown right now. You might have to scroll either to the top or the bottom of your screen to have that menu bar pop up. But if you click on that chat box, you can go in there and you can type in a question and we will see it on our end. And if we can address it right there at that moment, if it has to do with the topic that we're on, then we will do so. If not, we will definitely address it at the end of the webinar. So please take advantage of that so we make sure that we get all of your questions answered. And I want to emphasize to you also that this is not an in-depth webinar. We're going to keep it um, very simple for you because 
getting a loan and the lending process is quite detailed. So we're not going to get that all done within 45 minutes or an hour. So we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna pretend that you probably have never applied for a business loan and you don't know what you need to do. But of course, any in-depth questions that you have, we'd be happy to answer individually as we, um, as we have our resources available throughout the whole state. So let's talk about the economy in general. And you might think, why do I need to know about the economy in general if I'm gonna be applying for a small business loan? It's important because it's going to affect um, your terms. It's going to affect the, um, the rate that you get. It might affect the ability for you to get a loan. And you might wanna make sure it's the right time to get a loan. So right now, our economy is pretty healthy. Businesses are expanding, hiring is pretty steady. If you look at the recession from 2008, 11% uh, unemployment at the time. And right now, our state unemployment is at 5.3%. Now, that is actually up just a little bit, which um, shouldn't be a surprise with, with some of the recent announcements we've had about our economy. But it's important to know that it's still in a very healthy position right now. But some things you do need to be aware of is the, um, the global economy, right? We, we've all heard about the tariffs in the news, and we do have small businesses being affected by that. And the fact that uh, if you, let's say you had just taken out a big loan last year, and all of a sudden your business is affected by the tariffs, you might not be able to pay that loan. So if you, if you had any indication of what was going to happen to the economy, you might decide to put off that loan for a while. Also, you know, we have a, a divided Congress and, and pairing that with the fact that we're moving into an election year, a lot of times businesses and lending institutions will pull back a little bit. Not knowing for sure who will be in office as the president can affect people's ability to lend money or people's interest to borrow money because we do see changes in the economy as that office shifts around. So that's something to keep in mind over the next year. Another thing is cybersecurity. We all hear about the data breaches, right? We just had, I believe it was Capital One that just had a big data breach. And then we just had the settlement for um, Equifax. And <clears throat> what does this have to do with your small business? Well, if you do any type of government contracting or if you work with a really large vendor, um, say like Freeport MacMoran, if you do not have your information secure and they can go back and tie the data breach to your small business, you could be in big trouble. So making sure that you have things in place as you look at what's going on globally is important to help protect your small business. And you probably also heard in the news recently about interest rates. The feds have decided to lower interest rates for the first time in 10 years. And that is an indication that the economy is slowing down a little bit, that there's some inflation going on. Now, if you're gonna get a loan, the idea that interest rates are going down is wonderful news because you'll be paying less. But you have to keep in mind that that's also an indicator of the economy. And looking at that with whatever business you're going into is an important thing. So let's go ahead and talk about grants. I'd say at least half the people that come and visit me in my office in Thatcher ask about small business grants. Chances are they've been on a website or they've seen an infomercial and they know for certain that there are grants out there for small businesses. We just need to know how to get a hold of them. So I'm going to tell you what there is and what there is not for grants. So let's go ahead and talk about what is available for small businesses. There are a few grants out there for small businesses, but they're very, very rare, and most small businesses won't qualify for them. But I do want you to know what they are. So the, the SBIR is the Small Business Innovation Research Grant, and the SBTT is the Small Business Technology Transfer Program. These grants help seed early stage capital for technology commercialization in the United States. Um, basically, if your small business is engaged in something that the feds might be interested in, some kind of federal research that might develop into a potential commercialization project, you could possibly get money to look at um, producing the product or delivering the service. But again, it's very few and far between that are qualified for this grant, but they are out there. And then we also have USDA grants. USDA grants usually um, 
deal with value added grants. So let's say you were a winery and you were gonna convert your grapes into something different than wine, maybe soap or jelly or something new, you might be able to get funding to do the research on whether that has a feasible market. Um, you might be able to get some funds to even buy some equipment, but again, it's a very rare situation. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna give your hopes up, but, but it is a difficult thing to do. Another type of program that we see here in our Gila Valley are local grants that are funneled through nonprofit organizations. I would say more than the top two grants, this is something that we will see more on a local basis. And what I'm talking about there is, uh, I'll give you our local example. So we have Freeport McMoran here in our area. They do not give grants to for-profit businesses. That's just not, um, not their emphasis. But they do give grants to nonprofits. So if a nonprofit was able to look at the economy and think this might help our small businesses, they might be able to get funding that then could pass down to local small businesses, for-profit businesses. One example is years ago, we did a business, business district facade renovation grant and businesses were able to receive up to $2,000 to help spruce up the front of their business. But that didn't go straight to the business from Freeport. That came through the Greenlee Historical Museum and the Pride Society of Duncan. So you can see that there's a little sidestepping to get that done. Our Safford Downtown Association also has some business improvement um, grants that, that businesses can apply for. So a good thing to do is whatever town you're in, you can look for opportunities like that where businesses do end up with the dollars to have some kind of assistance, but they might have to be coming through a township or some kind of economic development council in order to get them. Now, when we talk about the SBIR and the STTR grants, um, we're looking at employees of 500 or less. They have to be owned by a US citizen and they're established. That's the other trick is most of these grants are not available for four startup businesses. It's just for established businesses who have shown that they have um, endurance and vitality and they're set to take on a new challenge. And most of these are going to do something with research or the value added process, especially if it's something the government might be interested in. Now, grants for startup businesses or brand new businesses, those are the, those are the rare four leaf clover. Um, I hate to say that they're not available ever, ever, because then somebody will say, well, my aunt got a grant for her business. So they're here and there, but they're usually regional. The only thing that I can tell you that is maybe on a national basis would be business competitions. So if you wrote a business plan, you might be able to enter into a competition through American Express or FedEx that um, is a proof of concept. And so you could go in, you could win the business plan competition and you get some startup money from those institutions. So those are the more general ones. Again, locally, you might have some grants coming through a nonprofit. We recently did a Shark Tank event here this uh, last year in Graham County. And again, those funds did not come from the Small Business Development Center, but we were able to help teach the students who wanted to participate in the class. And then we were able to provide some startup money um, and expansion money for small businesses here in the area. So keep in mind that those things might be available in your community. But again, if you're a food truck or a retail store or a construction company, the the federal grants that are available probably won't be available for you. The other thing that I hear a lot is, well, I'm a women-owned business, or maybe I have uh, uh, some clients come in and they've had a business for a while, but they're going to change their, um, their ownership so that the wife has 51% or more so that they can become a certified women-owned business. So let's just talk about that briefly. Getting certified as a women-owned business can be a good thing if you're going to do federal contracting. If you're trying to do it to get grants, it's just not gonna really help you very much at all. Women-owned businesses, because it's a minority-owned business like other minority-owned businesses, 
can have favorable outlooks on federal contracts because the federal government will state that you have to have so many of your subs or so many of your vendors be certified for a minority owned business. So if you're looking at doing work with the federal government, that could be a pro for you. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have our PTACT organization that can help you with that. So if that's something you wanna look into, definitely get a hold of us so we can set you up with one of those counselors. So what do you need to fund? That's the first question. If somebody comes in and says they need money, we're gonna ask them, well, what is it you need money for? The type of funding you need really depends on what it is you're going to use those funds for. So if you need funds for equipment, um, we'll be looking at a certain type of loan versus if you're coming in and you're wanting to buy a building, that's gonna be completely different or buy land. We're going to have a different strategy for that. Working capital, so that would be the money that you need on a daily basis to run your business. You can get loans for working capital, but they're typically not going to be a long-term loan because the idea is that the money is just continually flowing in and out. Another thing that people don't realize is you can actually get a, a, a loan if you have accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is money that's owed to you or soon to be owed to you. So let's say you entered into a contract with somebody and you knew that they were gonna take 60 to 90 days to pay once the job was done. Well, that might be difficult for your small business to handle. You might not be able to float the, that payroll or the cost of goods sold for the job. And so what you can do is you can actually go to a bank and you can have a loan given to you based on that contract. Uh, it'll be a short-term loan, but that will give you the ability to take on those big contracts even if you don't have the cash flow to do it. So the next question is how much money would you need? So whether you're a startup or you're looking to expand your business, a good thing to do is to break up those costs into three different segments. There's the one-time cost, which might be website development, logo design, the startup assets would be your equipment, your building, your furniture, and then the monthly operating costs would be um, the cost of goods sold, the items that go into the product that you're producing, the utilities, the marketing, all of those miscellaneous things. Now you'll see that I have six months written on here. If you're gonna go get a business loan for a startup and you don't have any revenue coming in right away, you're going to need to include four to six months of operating costs in your startup cost. Uh, we've actually had banks come and tell clients, you haven't asked for enough money because one of the worst things you can do when getting a small business loan is get just enough money to get into trouble. And what I mean by that is you have enough money to open your doors to have that initial inventory stock or be able to deliver some goods for a while, but then as payroll comes the second week and then the third week and then the fourth week. If your sales aren't there and you can't pay your employees or you can't restock your shelves, the next thing you know, two months into the business, somebody's walking into your store and they can't find what they need. So what are the chances that you just converted a new client? It's pretty low and they're gonna start telling their friends, next thing you know, because you don't have the cash flow to get the inventory, your business is suffering. So you wanna make sure that you have enough money to operate that business for six months while you're building your clientele. So that's actually a figure that we would put into the loan. And that's important to keep in mind. We have spreadsheets that can help you do this so that we can make sure that we have the accurate cost moving forward. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're quitting a job or replacing an income in your family to start this business, you might need to put in your personal finances as part of the business plan. And that's, that's acceptable, that's fine to do, but you wanna make sure that you can pay your mortgage and keep your electricity on and keep food on your table as the business is going forward. So if you are replacing income by, by starting the business, you will want to have the personal financial information in the business plan also, so you can make sure you have that covered. And then of course, the other question is what can you afford? So trying to figure out your payments for a small business loan is an important part, and that starts with financial projections. Knowing what you can afford, well, you gotta kind of figure out what your cash flow is gonna to be to begin with, right? So we have to back up and start to do some financial projections. Um, 
if you have access, you can hop on the internet and look at small business loan calculators. There's several of them out there. Uh, Bankrate has a really good one, but it's the opportunity to go in there, put down what your down payment would be, uh, stick in an interest rate. You can always Google what the current interest rate is on small business loans and there'll, there'll be a range out there. But you can put that in and start to look at what your monthly payment would be and then you can figure that into your business plan. The real key would be if you can make the monthly payment on your small business loan, even if the business isn't profitable, that will really look good to the bank. So let's say that there, there is, maybe you're, um, maybe you're working a side hustle, so you still have income coming in even when you're starting your, your business. Or maybe a spouse has a good income and you're starting the business. If you can show through your personal financial statement that you can still make that small business loan even if the business is not profitable to begin with, then that is a real secure for a small business loan. So it's important to run those numbers and see how much money you um, have available to make the payments and how much the payments would be. So now we're gonna talk about the types of small business loans. So the first one is revolving lines of credit. Um, when you think of a re revolving line of credit, it's kind of, it, it's a credit card basically, but it's through the bank, right? So it's, it's for short term needs. It would be um, maybe restocking your shelves when it's a seasonal time and you, you have a high demand. Um, so maybe the cash flow hasn't, hasn't really shown up yet, but you have lots of people coming in and buying things. So you would use your line of credit to go buy more inventory. Lines of credit are usually a variable or a floating rate, but here's the real key with lines of credit. They do not want you to use them for long-term debt. And the way that they make you make sure that you don't use it for long-term debt is they require you to clear your line of credit, or in other words, have it down to zero balance once a calendar year for 30 consecutive days. So why is this important? Well, maybe you had an offer for a line of credit and you took it and then you went and bought a truck with it or you went and bought a piece of equipment with it. And you think, well, I'll just make payments each month to my line of credit. Well, what will happen is your agreement with the bank for a line of credit will state universally that you have to have it cleared for 30 days consecutively once a year. And if you don't do that, then you're in default of the terms of the loan. We had a client out of another SBDC who didn't read the fine print on his term. And when he came in to get counseling, it was because his payments went from $2,000 a month to $8,000 a month because he was in default of the terms of the line of credit. He just didn't understand how to use a line of credit. So that counselor was able to convert his debt into a more appropriate form and get that taken care of. So it's important to understand how these different types of loans work. So the second type of loan would be a fixed loan. Um, this is a pretty common one. This is gonna be a five to seven year term. It's going to be used to purchase something like the equipment um, that you know has a lifespan. And you can also use it to consolidate debt or purchase vehicles. So the fixed loan is something that I would say is a more traditional small business loan. And the important thing to remember here too is you might mix these loans up, right? So you might get a fixed loan for some assets, but then you might have a revolving line of credit on top of that so that you can use that for your working capital as you need it. So you don't always have to have just one specific loan. Another thing is our real estate loans. So real estate loans obviously are used to purchase property, buildings or land or both. Now these are generally fixed prices, but they can actually go through um, a variable or a repricing structure where maybe they'll say in five years, let's if it's a 10 year loan, maybe at five years they're gonna revisit the loan package and see if they need to adjust the interest rate. So that would be something to talk to the bank about to see if they have that in there so that you're aware of a chance that the interest rate could go up and you're prepared for that. So oftentimes small business owners or potential small business owners might not think about the fact that real estate loans typically are 20 years or less 
when it comes to commercial loans. We might think, oh, well, I know how much my house loan is and I know how much my monthly payment is so I can turn around and get a business loan and I know that that's how much I'll be paying each month. But the fact is that there's a chance your mortgage is a 30 year mortgage, which is the typical mortgage. But this is gonna be a lot higher payment because of the shorter term. And what that term is depends on a lot of factors. Um, and we'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Another thing to keep in mind is amortization. So go back to that 30 year mortgage that you have. So that's spread out, right? So you're paying your mortgage off over the period of 30 years and your mortgage payment is gonna be about the same every month for those 30 years. What they can do with a commercial real estate loan is they can, um, even if, if it's like a 15 or a 20 year loan, they can amortize the loan for 30 years, which means your first payments for the first five years of the loan might be small, but then what would happen is you would have a big balloon payment at the end of, of the term of the loan. So again, that's why it's important to make sure that you understand the paperwork with your loans and what you're committing to. That balloon payment might work out just fine if you know that you're gonna be in a really good position because you've been able to um, increase your sales and develop collateral and make those smaller payments during the first part of the loan, but you have to be prepared for that balloon payment when the time comes. The other thing is, this is the easy thing to remember. The life of the loan should equal the life of the asset or the life of whatever it is that you're trying to fund. So if you have a piece of equipment and the vendor's telling you it should last 10 years, it's okay to go get a loan for 10 years. But if, if going back to the idea that you're turning around and trying to fund your inventory, if you're trying to fund your inventory with a seven year loan, that's not good because your inventory should be turning over a lot quicker than seven years. If you can remember this little, this little suggestion, the life of the loan should equal the life of the asset, it will help you make sure that you're getting the right loan for the right piece of equipment or um, whatever it is you're trying to fund so that you don't get yourself in trouble with the terms of the loan. So now let's talk about SBA loans. So SBA loans are actually a guarantee. So the SBA does not make loans. The Small Business Development Center in your local area does not make loans. SBA is not a bank. So what the SBA does is it goes in and guarantees a percentage of the loan with the bank to make the, make the uh, loan less risky so that a bank is willing to do it. There are a couple of primary examples of SBA loans, and sometimes they'll come up with special express loans. There was a Patriot Express loan for a while for veterans, and um, they kind of come and go, but the two primary loans are 7A and the 504. So the 7A loan is, is the most popular loan program for the SBA, and it is a loan guarantee that is provided, like I said earlier, to the lender, so they're more willing to lend the money. So an example might be if you're a business startup and you don't have a cash flow history to provide to the lender that gives them the assurance that you'll be able to pay the loan back, an SBA 7A loan would be able to serve um, the lender with an increased guarantee against default. So if you go into your bank and you're trying to get a loan and they say, um, you know, we're just not comfortable with this loan, then they might try and, and do an SBA loan. Now, there are preferred lenders. So the question might be, is your bank a preferred lender? And what that means is that they have gotten permission from the SBA to execute and approve SBA loans. If you have a bank you're working with that is not an SBA preferred lender, they actually have to send the package to the SBA for approval. So it's, it's going to take uh, longer. There might be you know, communication issues. So if you're going to get an SBA loan, you really should try and do it with a preferred lender if possible. Now you're going to pay loans, loan fees, uh, higher loan fees than you would with a commercial loan because it's an SBA loan. You're gonna have more paperwork. You're going to have requirements that 
might be in addition to a typical loan that you need to be aware of. So one example would be um, if you have a, um, I actually had a client do this. She was in the process of getting an SBA loan. And what happened is she went and bought some um, uh, display shelving. So there was a store going out of business and it was a, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to go buy all of these display shelving for her new store. Well, she just bought them straight from the lady because it was just a, a close out, a clearance of some sort. And she didn't get a receipt because it was just a cash transaction. So when she went back and wanted to use that expense towards the loan so she could be reimbursed for it, she couldn't do it. So little things like that you need to be aware of that there are more regulations with the SBA loan. All right. My screen is freezing up. Hang on a second. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so types of lenders. As I mentioned earlier, there are several different types of lenders, and the ones that you're probably most familiar with are the commercial banks. So that would be Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. These are the big names that you hear, and we also see them on the report of our SBA lenders. And supposedly they're doing a lot of SBA loans, small business loans, but when it comes to the rural areas, we don't see it that often, to be honest with you. The small to mid-sized banks are where we will see more of our local lending happening, such as National Bank, um, Arizona Credit Union, 1AZ. Now they don't do startup loans, but, but you can get some funding once you're established. So these small banks are more likely to have a personal relationship with you in your small town, and you might be uh, more likely to be able to receive funding from them. Another type of lending institution is a micro lending program. Now these lenders are not banks. You're not going to have a savings and a checking account set up with them. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading that wrong. The regional micro lending program. Let's go back up to that third bullet there. The regional micro lending program um, is something that's specific to Graham and Greenlee County here. But if you're joined from another area, you might have some availability there also. So we have some funding through Local First Arizona to have small business owners who maybe are struggling to get financing sit down with a committee made of local people who can look at the whole situation. Maybe their credit score isn't the best, but maybe they see that this person's put a lot of thought and planning into the business and they are ready to go. They're ready to hire people, add jobs to our economy and they might be able to get some funding or maybe even startup funding to then turn around and get a bigger loan so that they don't have a down payment for a loan, but maybe they can get some local micro lending funds and then turn around and get a bigger loan with somebody else. So if you're from our area, just know that Graham and Greenlee County do have those available. But if you're not, you might reach out to your local economic development or your local SBDC to see if there are any micro loans specific to your area. Now let's jump down to where I was um, skipping down to a second ago. So the second tier lenders, these are not going to be your traditional banks or you could have a checking account. These are gonna be only for small business loans and um, they usually are regional. So it might be in a tri-state area. Two of them that we have done work with is Axion and Prestamos. And the benefit of these lenders is that they can overlook things that maybe a commercial bank would would say well we can't do your loan maybe the credit score is too low or maybe you don't have enough collateral to put towards the loan or maybe it's just a more risky risky venture in general so it's important to know that these resources are also available to you um, these are the types of relationships that we have as an SBDC. So maybe you're not familiar with these institutions, but if you come and work with us, we can let you know about them. And that's the other part that is important to know is when you come and work in, with an SBDC, because we already have these established relationship with lenders, we can call them and we can talk to them and we can say with your permission, but I have a client who's looking to um, lease a building and do some renovations and get some 
inventory and they need $10,000 and their credit score is 670 and they've got a couple thousand dollars to put into it and they will tell us if it's something that they're interested in. That saves you the headache of going and filling out pages and pages of applications just to be turned down. So we can kind of use the SBDC as a clearinghouse uh, or as a matchmaker for what type of funding that you might need and that that's a big help. The other thing is sometimes you might be struggling to get a loan and you don't understand why. Um, working with our lenders, we can communicate with them and find out where's the weakness, what's the problem. Sometimes it might not have anything to do with you. Sometimes banks uh, on an annual basis will just set up the portfolio for the year, their lending portfolio. And maybe they say, hey, you know what, restaurants just aren't something we're doing this year. It doesn't really matter how good your credit is or how much money. Um, if it's not something that their stakeholders want to invest in that year, then you're not going to get your loan. So we can help you through that process. So when you start thinking about how do I qualify for a loan, there's a lot of things to think about. If you might remember back from your high school or college finance classes, you might remember the five C's, uh, collateral credit capacity, capital, and character. So these are things, as you look at them, you realize just how in-depth the whole uh, analysis is when you go to get a business loan, right? So collateral is what you're willing to give them if you don't make the loan payments, if you're in default. Now, sometimes collateral can be whatever it is you're actually funding, right? So if you went and say, got a loan for a backhoe, then the backhoe itself would be the collateral. So that's a little easy. But if you were doing something else, you might need to um, turn over your van or turn over your house or um, your retirement, something else like that. So you have to think about what would I be willing to give up uh, for this business loan. And of course your credit, your credit score is really important. You can see there on that chart that you can kind of start to figure out would I have a chance at a small business loan. So most commercial lenders won't even look at you if your credit is below 700. And when I talk about that, we're, we're talking about your FICO score. Um, it, it just depends on the institution. They might say no lower than 720. But we have lots of lenders, those second tier lenders that I referred to that will work with people that have a 580. So it's gonna affect your terms, but it might be the only way that you can get financing. And then capacity. So your ability to repay that loan. I go back to what I said earlier about if you can pay that loan without having any money coming into your business for the first few months, that's a really good thing. This is also where they're going to look at your job stability and your income stability. This is where if you keep switching jobs every five months, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get a small business loan. And then capital, the amount of money that you're willing to put down. This is what we refer to as the skin in the game, right? Um, Nobody is going to give you 100% financing because where is your risk, right? If something doesn't happen, then yeah, you're going to have a really bad credit score and you're going to be in default. But they want to see that you have something to lose too, which is why collateral and capital are important. Now, again, working with some of the second tier lenders, collateral might be something unique and you might end up putting something up that doesn't really have that much market value, but they know that that is a significant item to you and they know that you're going to do everything you can to not lose that. One of our lenders actually said that the weirdest thing they've ever taken for collateral was a one-eyed horse, which I thought was pretty funny. But they knew that the man that was getting the loan had nothing more valuable on this earth than that one-eyed horse. And so they actually took the horse's collateral. And then, of course, character. And that's going to be based on uh, your history and your ability to pay back the loan, your, your integrity. So when we go and think about your credit scores, um, it's, it's, it's one of many things, right? There's lots of here to think about. Now the second bullet there's, there says, why do deposits come into play? What are you talking about, Charmaine? Well, what I'm talking about is when somebody comes in and they wanna look for a small business loan, I usually say, who are you banking with right now? Now, if they're banking with somebody that uh, makes small business loans available, I usually say, let's try them first. 
And the reason is, is because your terms of your loan will actually take into consideration the deposits you have in that bank. So believe it or not, banks make more interest off deposits than they do off of a loan. So you can actually get better terms on your loan if you're working in a bank where you have your deposits. So that's something to think about. The other thing is the relationship with your banker. Um, oh, sorry, relationship with your banker, not our banker. Doesn't matter what kind of relationship you have with my banker. So a relationship with your banker is something that's important because that person will not be the person making the decision on the loan. That's gonna to go to the underwriter, somebody you will probably never meet. But that underwriter doesn't know you at all. And how your banker knows you could affect your ability to get the loan. So it's important to have that relationship and realize that um, they can put in a good word for you and that they can um, help that underwriter really understand what it is you're trying to do with your small business in the community. Now the question is, of course, what can I do to prepare? So first of all, you really need to know what your credit score is or your FICO score. Now we've come into an age with online banking that a lot of um, banks and a lot of credit card companies will actually put your credit score uh, in a place where you can see it on a regular basis. So if you have that opportunity, definitely look at that and keep track of where you're at. Know what it is and know uh, if it starts to fall that maybe you need to look to make sure that there's nothing fraudulent going on in your account. And um, the other thing to remember is that the credit score that you'll see, let's say if you get online and your bank says, hey, here's your credit score, here's your FICO score, go check it. If you check that, there's a really good chance that that score could possibly be higher than what your actual credit score is. Those credit scores that you see, these little short peaks, are, are little, um, they're a little different. They actually don't go as far back in your credit as a thorough credit screening would do. So if you want to apply for a loan, your credit score is gonna be different than what you see. And so just be prepared for that because if you're right on the border of maybe that 700 uh, and your credit card saying you're at a 700 and you go, oh, that's great. I can go get a small business loan with a commercial bank. When they run the full credit check, it goes back further and you might end up being lower than that. So you might wanna kind of pad yourself to get above that before you go apply for a loan. Some things that you can do is keep your credit cards below 50% of the limit. So if you're like, oh, I'm not happy with my credit card or with my credit score, make sure that you don't have more than 50% of your capacity used on your credit card. Another thing that, that's a, a big error that people make is maybe they get a really good deal in the mail for a credit card, 0% interest for 12 months. And so you turn around and you, you transfer that balance on that credit card. You've had the credit card for 20 years. Well, guess what? You just dropped your credit score because what happens is they look at how long you've had credit open. So don't drop those old cards. Even if you're not using them, still keep them because that helps you with your credit uh, score. One more thing to keep in mind is I know it's easy and tempting when you show up at Kohl's and you show up at Home Depot and you show up at these stores and they say, hey, you get 10% off your purchase if you apply for a credit card. Every time you apply for credit, it can affect your credit score. Now there's, there's soft hits and there's hard hits and we're not gonna get into that too much, but realize that every time you add a credit card to your portfolio, you're, there's a good chance you're starting to drop your credit score. So you don't wanna get too crazy with that stuff, okay? Now the timing, where is the sweet spot for getting a loan? If you're a new business, you really wanna get that startup loan, something to help you get going. Because in between the time you get going and two years into your business, we call that the dead zone. This is the reason why. Um, if, you're, if you're an ex existing business, they're going to want financial documents for the past couple of years. So if you, go, if you go into the bank and you've been open for a year, they're gonna ask you for documentation for two years and you're not gonna have it because you've only been open for a year, but you're not a new business either because you've already been established. So that becomes a really difficult time to get funding. 
So if you think you might need funding, you want to get it from the get-go, or you need to be prepared to sustain your business for two years before you go back to the bank. The other thing to remember is you're going to need money. Again, nobody's doing 100% financing. I have people come into my office all the time and they maybe got a good idea and they've got the ambition to do the business, but they have no money. Um, again, the skin in the game is something that the banks want to see. So if you want to get a loan, start putting some money aside so you'll have enough for that down payment. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, if you're an existing business, two to three years of tax returns and profit and loss statements is something that, um, and the balance sheet is something that you're going to need to have prepared and ready to go. Also, a new business, you're going to need financial projections and a business plan. It depends on how, um, how much money you want to get, depends on, or I should say the business plan depends on how much money you're going to get. If you're just going for $10,000, they do not need a 30-page business plan. But if you're going for a couple hundred thousand dollars, they're going to need a really thorough business plan. And we can definitely help you with that process. So let us help you with that. And your financial projections are something that um, can be tricky to do, but we can help you through the tools that we have and all of our SBDCs to make those projections. Okay. One other thing with this is don't use Credit Karma. You just saw the annualcreditreport.com website pop up there. So there's three credit agencies, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You can go to those agencies and you can get um, a credit report and a credit score, but it might cost a little bit of money depending on what you're looking for. The annual, annualcreditreport.com is, is something that's approved by the federal government. It will give you your credit report. It will not give you your credit score or your FICO score. You'd have to pay for that. But it is an opportunity for you to make sure there's nothing on your credit report that's inaccurate that might be affecting your credit score. But um, we have a, a director that is a banker and she says sites like Credit Karma are, are very inaccurate. So I wouldn't necessarily be depending on those when it comes time to check your credit score. The best thing that you can do if you want to get a business loan is to visit your local small business development center. As you saw earlier, we are all over the state and if we're physically far away from you, we can still do some Zoom meetings or conference calls to make sure that we can help you remotely because while we while we um, have these relationships with the businesses, we, we can't help you unless you come and see us. And remember, all of our services are at no cost and confidential, so you have nothing to lose if you come in and get some help from us. I'm gonna uh, let you know about some of our upcoming events now. So if you have some questions, go ahead and open up that chat box. Now's the time to put your questions in there so we can address them. But while you're thinking about that, I want to let you know about a program that we have coming up here this next Tuesday. We're having a kickoff meeting for our Dream Builder program. Dream Builder uh, is a standalone online program. You can actually do it anywhere for, at dreambuilder.org. You can log in free of cost. It was uh, founded and funded by Freeport MacMorand. And what we do is we offer additional supplemental courses. So we will actually go through a um, series like two one or two portals every couple of weeks and then you come onto EAC's campus and we have a two-hour seminar that goes deeper into that and it's a wonderful program this is the fourth year that we've ran it we've had 41 women graduate and I did say women this is aimed at women but there's nothing wrong with a man showing up there's nothing specific about what we learn they're all very general business ideas so men are definitely welcome to attend this kickoff meeting is free and then as we start the supplemental courses after the kickoff meeting the whole program is fifty dollars includes everything for the rest of the year and we will go and meet twice a month from august to december and so if you're interested in joining us for that and just learning more Make sure you put that on your calendar. You can call us, you can email me, and we will get you registered for that so you can get into the system and get reminders set, okay? Also, if you're in the Globe area, we have a Facebook class coming up at the Chamber of Commerce, and that is set for a week from today on August 15th at six o'clock. 
This again is free of cost and will help you go through the very basics of learning how to set up a Facebook page for your business and how to manage that. So if you're in the Globe area and would like to attend that, give us a call at 428-8590 and Janelle will be happy to get you registered for that. And then the last thing that we have going on is our next webinar. Our next webinar will be September 26th at the same time, 12 o'clock, and it's gonna be about selling or exiting your business. We have a lot of baby boomers who have started to come in and said, you know, I'm ready to retire. I wanna exit my business, how do I do that? So we have some um, experts and some resources that will be sharing with you how to do that so you can start preparing now. So I see, um, Dave, yeah, I will contact you about getting a meeting set up. You asked about the Quick, QuickBooks class. Um, we, I've, I'm not sure where you're at, Dave. Type in where you're at because I'm not sure um, when we're gonna be having our next QuickBook class in your area, but we can certainly have that figured out. And we'll see here. All right. So our next one that we have here on our Thatcher campus, is going to be on Thursday, or Tuesday through Thursday, starting on October 1st. So, all right, yeah, so you're on Thatcher. So if you guys are in the area and you're interested in our QuickBooks class, it's gonna be October 1st through the 3rd. That's an evening class from 5.30 to 9 p.m. and that's held here uh, on our North, North Campus area. So we will get a hold of you, Dave, and make sure you get the information on that. Now, um, if you guys want to check your emails on Monday, you'll have a link to the recorded version of this webinar in case you need to go back and check anything or if you're interested in sharing that with somebody else, please do. We want our services to be not the best kept secret anymore. We wanna make sure that we're here for you and anybody that you know who wants to start or expand their small business. So I don't see any other questions so I'm gonna guess that everybody is good to go and, and I answered all of the, the curiosities you had about small business lending. So we even finished early, but I thank you all for logging on today and taking the time. We appreciate it. We know your time is valuable and we hope that this was a good resource for you. Um, when you get the email on Monday with the link to the recorded webinar. You also have a survey to fill out. We really appreciate it if you fill out that survey so we know if we've done a good job for you today. Thank you guys so much and enjoy the rest of your week.